Whether you've had your Android device for many years, or you just purchased a new low-end to mid-range phone in an attempt to save some money. Android can feel slow or sluggish for a number of reasons. So today, I wanted to highlight my top 10 suggestions to help your smartphone or tablet run much, much faster. The first thing that I recommend is for you to remove any application or game that you haven't used in at least three months. So this suggestion is gonna be ideal for those who have had their phone for a long time. Personally, I've found that if it's been a couple of months since I last opened an app, then I'm probably not going to use it anymore. And then if I do end up needing it, then it only takes a few minutes to reinstall it from the Google Play Store. So first, go through your home screen or your application drawer and find any app that you no longer use. When you find one, we're gonna perform a long press gesture on the application icon itself, and then look for the small eye icon in that pop-up. This is going to take you to the app info page for that particular app, and we can just tap the uninstall button directly from here. I also recommend using the settings application and searching for the word unused. Finding that option within the apps page and then going through all of the apps you see in this list as well. Applications listed here should only be those that have not been opened in a long time. So again, look through all of these apps and remove the ones that you no longer need on your phone. Not only can these unused apps run in the background or send you useless notifications, but they can also eat up your internal storage, which can result in poor performance if it's close to getting full. As you go through these applications on your phone or tablet, you're gonna notice that there are some which cannot be uninstalled like normal you'll either notice a grayed out uninstall button or that will be replaced with a disabled button. And if you try to uninstall one of these pre-installed apps, then you'll get a message asking if you want to remove all of the apps installed updates. This happens because OEMs like Google and Samsung will pre-install certain applications directly from the factory and these apps are not allowed to be un uninstalled for one reason or another. So if you find an application that you cannot uninstall normally, yet you still have no reason to use it, then be sure to disable it from this app info page. And if you wanna take things a step further, we can uninstall these bloatware apps from the default user account on your device. This is done with a simple ADB command which I already have a dedicated guide here on the channel showing you how that is done. So I'll be sure to link to that video down below, but you can also find that in the pinned comment here as well. This next suggestion is going to be perfect for those with a low end or really, really old Android device because it will reduce or completely eliminate any application or service that's running in the background. To do this though, we are first required to enable developer mode so that we can gain access to this hidden developer options menu. Now that's done by tapping on the build number entry from within the about phone section of the settings application around seven to 10 times. You're just gonna want to keep tapping it until you're told that you are now a developer. If you're not familiar with this and you need some extra help, then again, I'll be sure to link to a dedicated guide down below. Now, once we get to this hidden developer options menu, we then want to scroll down through most of this list until you find the apps section. Then you're gonna see a couple of features that can help improve the performance of Android. 
Firstly, it's a good idea to test the background process limit feature. So we tap on that. Now I recommend changing this to the at most two processes option as an initial test. After changing this, see how your device performs and you may end up wanting to come back and change this to at most one process or no processes at all. This can end up making some apps load slower since Android has to fetch all of that data again and that will cause a little bit more battery drain than you're used to. But I think most people will be okay with this if it means that their phone is going to be more snappy performing other tasks. You could also enable the toggle labeled don't keep activities. That way your apps are automatically shut down once you minimize them and go back to the home screen. And while we're still in the developer options menu, I have found that it's a good idea to change the default animation speed if you want your device to feel faster. You can find these options within the drawing section of the developer options menu. And there's going to be three different options that you want to change. Window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale. These are all gonna be set to 1x by default, but changing this to 0.5x or even turning the animation off entirely can make your feel like it's turbocharged and zipping through its actions. This can even improve both battery life as well as performance since your chipset no longer has to render those animations so quickly. This is my go-to setting anytime I use a low-end phone and it just feels too slow to use. There's no need to allow Bluetooth to be on and scanning for devices in the background if you never use the technology. And the same can be said for NFC as well. There's just no reason to have any service enabled that you have no interest in using. I'm not saying that you should try to avoid using these features, but if you don't, or if it's incredibly rare that you need them, then it's probably best to keep them off until you do. So in the settings app, you can search for Bluetooth, turn it off from here. You can search for NFC, turn it off from here. You can even disable the default printer service if you have zero reason to print anything from your phone. Another way to limit your apps from having access to your data and from your hardware is by revoking permissions. So you can find this by diving into the settings application, looking for the privacy or security and privacy menu, and then look in the privacy controls section so that you can locate the permission manager. You can also just search for the word manager at the top of the settings app and then look for that permission manager from here. Once we're here, you're gonna see a list of many permissions that are enabled on Android. And you'll want to dive into each of them that you see listed. Then look for apps within the allowed section that you have no interest in using or that you have found that you are no longer using them anymore. So for example, I don't need Android Auto having access to my calendar. So I can find that app within this permission, tap it, and then select don't allow. Now you're gonna see that app is no longer in the allowed section. So I recommend you go through all of these permissions and then check and monitor to see if you need any of them to have access to that permission. Again, I don't need Android Auto having access to my call logs. So I'm going to revoke that permission. 
Google loves to get you to enable the voice activation hot word for Google Assistant each and every time you set the phone up. And I suspect this will continue once Gemini replaces Google Assistant. Now this feature can be useful for a lot of people, but it also leads to another application running in the background. And again, if you aren't using this feature, then why have it enabled? So go into the settings application again, and then search for the word Hey at the top. You should then find an entry labeled Hey Google and voice match. Once we tap on that, we can then disable these two toggles from here. For anyone who has a phone from Samsung, after you disable these two toggles, it can also be a good idea to disable Bixby Voice as well. Many people out there will recommend that you go through your apps and wipe the cache from them one at a time. Android used to have a clear cache partition feature within its recovery mode, but that is no longer offered. Instead, you can simply bring up the power menu and then tell your phone to reboot. Then, as the phone boots back up, it will automatically wipe all of that useless cached data for you. This is even recommended by high-level security researchers since it can help stop hackers from getting into and staying in your device. They even recommend that most people reboot their phone every week, but restarting every other day may be better for those who consider themselves a very active smartphone user. While you're in the developer options area, go ahead and scroll down to the networking section as it's a good idea cons to consider unchecking the mobile data always active toggle. This is going to be enabled by default, but some of you may not need the ability to switch networks quickly and keeping certain hardware features like mobile data off when you don't need it can help make your Android smartphone run much faster. Some people have also found that the Wi-Fi scan throttling feature is going to be disabled by default. So enabling this can help improve performance since our phones have enough reasons to scan for Wi-Fi networks and each time it scans, your phone is using its resources on it rather than making your phone perform faster. System tracing is also something that you'll want to look into if you have developer mode enabled. This tracing feature gets enabled after you turn on developer mode, but most of us don't need this information as it's really for developers who want to troubleshoot their apps. So going in here and disabling all of the toggles that you see can go a long way to improving the performance on your device. I saved this suggestion for last because I know how much people hate to see it recommended. But if you've been using your phone for over two years and it started to feel sluggish, then a factory data reset could be a quick and easy way of fixing that problem. Complex operating systems like Android and even Windows get bogged down over time and starting with a fresh slate is a quick way to get things back to normal. Now, of course, it will take time to download all of your apps and games so you can set your phone back up again. But there are times that this is going to be the best solution and it can save you hundreds of dollars by not making you feel like you need to buy a new phone. So go into the settings app, search for the word reset, and then you should find the erase all data factory reset option from here. I see YouTube videos all the time talking about ways that you can increase the performance of your device. Yet most of them are having you install antivirus apps, system cleaning apps, and using other features that make it feel like your phone is faster without actually doing anything. But it actually ends up working for them 
due to the placebo effect. So today, I wanted to come up with a legit list of things that everyone can do if they feel their smartphone or tablet is slowing down to a crawl each time you want to use it. This can be incredibly no annoying and it can cause you to focus on the lag rather than the tasks that you need to complete. So if you have any additional questions, then please feel free to use the comment section down below. And do not forget to give this video a like while also subscribing to the channel as we're getting really close to that 100,000 subscriber milestone.